Glad to have you back. You're watching TVC News Hour. Thousands of protesters marched today on the streets of the opposition stronghold of Kishimo as Kenya plunged deeper into a political crisis after a vote delay petition went unheard. The Supreme Court says it could not hear a case to delay a presidential election because it lacked the judges to make a quorum. Chief Justice David Maraga said one judge was unwell and another was abroad and unable to return in time. Yet another judge was unable to come to court after her bodyguard was shot and injured Tuesday night. Only the Supreme Court has the authority to delay Thursday's poll. And the UN peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, has condemned the arrest of 30 opposition members. This is as a crackdown on dissent by President Joseph Kabila's government intensifies. Congo is struggling to deal with high political tension and security concerns are threatening to spiral out of control due to Kabila's refusal to hold elections when his presidential mandate expired a year ago. Human rights activist and friend of Congo, Maurice Kani, joins us now. For more on this, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Now, it's been over one year since that uh, election was shifted and nobody knows for certain what is going to happen. As a friend of Congo, what are your concerns? Yeah, that's the crux of the problem there. Uh, President, as you stated uh, correctly, President Joseph Kabila was supposed to organize elections in December of, by December of 2016. Uh, his, his government has failed to do so. Um, he appears to want to stay in power by any means necessary. He was given a lifeline of one year um, through a negotiations uh, with the Catholic Church to establish, to organize elections by December 2017. However, uh, just uh, recently, within the last uh, couple weeks or so, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission announced that elections won't be able to be organized until 2019. And of course, uh, this has filed the opposition forces um, because it appears that uh, President uh, Kabila, or Joseph Kabila, uh, looks to uh, extend his stay as long as possible uh, without even organizing elections and maybe even setting the, uh, the ground or the foundation uh, to organize a, a referendum that would um, abolish the current constitution and give him extended stay in power. All right, this then means that um, the arrests and the unrests will be long term. Well, the, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, Congolese are living in a, in a police state. Uh, the recent arrest and arrests in uh, organizing elections and maybe even setting the, uh, the ground or the foundation uh, to organize a, a referendum that would um, abolish the current constitution and give them extended stay in power. All right, this then means that um, the arrests and the unrests will be long term. Well, the, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, Congolese are living in a, in a police state. Uh, the recent arrest in, arrest in uh, Lubumbashi, in the, the southern uh, province of former Katanga province, is basically another symptom of what's uh, occurring uh, throughout the country. Uh, opposition figures, human rights activists, civil society, youth uh, organizers are being arrested uh, almost daily uh, simply for standing up and saying that they want elections to be held, they want their constitution to be uh, respected, and they want the opportunity to choose a new, a new leader uh, as, um, as uh, is outlined uh, by the Congo's constitution and the social contract that was established uh, between Joseph Kabila and the Congolese people. Okay, now I also understand that the opposition is highly divided and um, um, very weak. Uh, let's look at the economy right now with um, inflation at over 50%. How long do you think Kabila can hold on, uh, I mean, stifle very hungry people? Well, uh, the thing about hungry people, they are to the point where they're so desperate uh, that they, they haven't been able to muster the, the force to, to resist. Um, so he's done a... Um, a uh, good job, let's say, of, of repressing mm -hmm. people, of keeping his security forces intact. In, in um, certainly, uh, we can see that um, to the extent that the opposition is uh, disorganized, it's that the Kabila regime has bought off 
um, certain um, certain figures in the opposition. You have Nochibala, for example, who is part of the large, uh, largest um, opposition uh, party, uh, UDPS, Union for Democracy and Social Progress. He was bought off by Kibika. Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, Olenga Kauai, another uh, major opposition figure, was bought off. So what Kibika is doing is using uh, the patronage network, using the resources of the state, uh, on the one hand, to buy off certain opposition figures, and on the other hand, to repress those opposition figures who are standing on principles and resisting uh, the regime. Mm. Well, talking about these opposition um, figures, 30 opposition party members were arrested on the eve of the return of um, Felix Shisekedi. What does his return portend for Kabila? Well, um, I'm not so sorry so much of a, of a return. He's been in the country and he's um, um, traveled outside of the country for, to undertake uh, diplomatic uh, initiatives. Uh, he was uh, visiting the southern province of uh, the old Katanga and uh, Lubumbashi in order to rally his, um, his base, the members of the uh, Union for Democracy and Social Progress. And in advance of his, vi his visit, uh, the Kabila's security forces uh, sacked his, uh, the headquarters of UDPS. Uh, they um, held on to basically house arrest one of um, the key opposition uh, figures who were part of the uh, opposition um, coalition. Uh, and when um, Chesikedi, in fact, did arrive, what they did was they, uh, they prevented him from meeting with his, uh, his members. Uh, they, at the airport, uh, they made sure that he, they gave him a, a police escort to assure that he would go straight to the hotel and not to uh, his party headquarters. And the next day when he tried to get out and go um, visit uh, his members, uh, the security forces blocked his um, automobile. Mm -hmm. He then got out of the car and tried to, um, to walk. And then they started to rough him up. So it, what we see here is intimidation tactics on the part of the Kabila regime. And in fact, what it is, it's a sign of weakness on the part of the regime. That is, sole legitimacy at this point is force. He had, uh, the Kabila regime has no other legitimacy than the fact that they can utilize the security forces to arrest people, brutalize leaders, uh, to actually kill um, individuals. So for all intents and purposes, as I shared earlier, Congolese are living in a police state, and they're trying to organize and resist this police state. But we're going to see this resistance continue, um, irrespective of um, the increased militarization of the um, public space by the Kabila regime. Thank you so much for your time on the news, Maurice Kearney. We appreciate it. Are you welcome?